Australian MMA champ Alexander Volkanovski has earned himself a reputation as one of UFC's most formidable fighters, thanks to a perfect record, amazing ranking, and even a few dramatic feuds. Keep watching this video for all the reasons why fighters are really scared of Alexander Volkanovski. Let's get right into it. First up, we have his UFC fighting record. Volkanovski currently holds the UFC featherweight championship belt, which he won from former featherweight champion Max Holloway back in 2019. He's faced Holloway one more time since then and emerged with a victory again. That's a kind of pattern for Volkanovski at this point. He literally always wins. In his 20 or so fights that he's had with the UFC since joining in 2016, Volkanovski never once left the octagon disappointed with his performance. Other key wins came over Jose Aldo and Chad Mendez, which basically paved Alex's way towards the division glory. Most recently, he crushed Brian Ortega in the octagon and told the entire world that he wants to keep his belt for now. From his 20 win streak, the most thrilling ones are without a doubt the two against Holloway. It's as if the Australian just can't catch a break when it comes to UFC fights. But definitely, it's his talent and skillful fighting strategies that have made the experience so rewarding for him. Let's have a closer look at those two Holloway bouts. Next, Volkanovski versus Holloway won. Back in 2019, Volkanovski was informed he'd get a title shot against the formidable Holloway. A chance at divisional championship was nothing short of what Volkanovski deserved after back-to-back -back wins ever since he joined the UFC. And when he stepped into the octagon one fine December evening, he showed to the world that he'd been given the title shot much, much later than he should have. Starting off strong in a manner opposite to Holloway, Volkanovski kept it coming with the leg kicks. He seemed pretty willing to exchange with Holloway in the pocket. And even if it took Volkanovski the entire five rounds to defeat Holloway, because, come on, Holloway didn't keep the belt with him for that long with a wavering spirit, Volkanovski still imprinted his mark on history that day. The Hawaiian particularly struggled with Volkanovski's leg kicks, and the Australian didn't take long to realize that, because through the five rounds, it was the one technique that he relied on the most. The second round didn't bring anything unique, and Holloway did consistently lose his ground, and the Hawaiian's rhythm was completely disrupted going into the fourth round, while the fifth one was the final nail in the coffin. The defeat didn't crush Holloway's confidence at the time. Okay, he lost his belt, but Holloway knew he had it in him to get it back. He soon requested a rematch, and his wish came true just a year later. Now we have Volkanovski versus Holloway too. If the defeated kept his confidence, the winner had no reason not to. Volkanovski agreed to a Holloway rematch almost immediately, and the contest was set for UFC 251 that was to take place the very next year in 2020. In the summertime heat of Abu Dhabi, Volkanovski's performance was the only thing hotter than the weather that night. The Australian was determined to bring it on a second time, and he did. The first round bore a resemblance to the previous fight's first round. Holloway took up his style of low-energy starts whereas Volkanovski took his chance to grip his opponent from the first round onwards with loads and loads of energy. However, Holloway turned things around a little. He started easing up with each passing minute, and with an opponent who'd unleashed his strength at a 100 from the very beginning, he knew that he had more energy in him in the later rounds. It was only a brilliant play of tactics and power in the last 10 minutes that proved to the world that Volkanovski is indeed better than Holloway, no questions asked. And why wasn't there a Holloway versus Volkanovski 3? A champ like Holloway, who has plenty of achievements on his name won't give up on a belt, right? Wrong, because Holloway got a chance to avenge his losses against Volkanovski most recently at the UFC 272, but he didn't take it. The talks of Holloway versus Volkanovski 3 were underway when Holloway put them all to rest. He said he didn't want a rematch against Volkanovski and that he had other face-offs to concentrate on. Volkanovski himself affirmed the title for today's video, that other fighters were scared of him when Holloway refused to fight him a third time. He said that Holloway doesn't want a 3-0 on his record when he's otherwise doing so great against other fighters. While these are just claims made by one opponent regarding another, if you think about it, it makes sense. Holloway had recently secured a win when discussions for a third bout against Volkanovski began, and instead of calling the Australian out, Holloway seemed to prefer a rematch against Conor McGregor. In fact, he withdrew from the match, citing injury as a reason. Volkanovski said, So, the UFC, green lights on UFC for the trilogy, green light for me, but the only one that's talking about other options is Max Holloway. So, yeah, this might rattle a few feathers. Others, but I'm gonna leave you with this. Am I saying he's scared? Maybe, but you wanna hear me out here. Next, let's talk about Volkanovski's feuds. While there are fighters who are talented at the microphone much more than Volkanovski, it's his brief responses that cause tides in the UFC world. Volkanovski has often given some brilliant responses to fighters and trolls alike that have raised his ranks as a force to be reckoned with, even outside the octagon. Once on Twitter, when a bitter Holloway fan labeled him with a slur word and was being disrespectful, Volkanovski shut him down with the perfect response. He said that he's an Aussie who beat his
beat his favorite fighter without much effort. His tweet received a lot of attention, and many fans came to Volkanovski's support. The fans said that someone who's shown the level of skills and performance like Volkanovski shouldn't be disrespected. On other occasions, the Australian beast has called out his opponents for losing to him, or before matches that it's inevitable that they will lose to him. Back when the Holloway bouts were taking place, Volkanovski expressed multiple times on Twitter how Holloway doesn't stand a chance against him. Holloway wasn't taking these threats seriously, having been successful throughout his UFC career. But then Volkanovski actually proved that he's a stronger and more deserving contender for the belt. After that first win against Holloway, Volkanovski had gained a lot of confidence. Now he was on the offense outside the octagon as well. Not only did he take jabs at Holloway online, he even said that he'd win for sure in any press appearances he made. It was always a sight whenever Holloway and Volkanovski indulged one another in those Twitter beefs. Volkanovski obviously had the upper hand because, you know, he's been the winner. Next, we have Volkanovski versus Ortega. 2021 saw Volkanovski take it up against another UFC big shot. The bout against Brian Ortega came in the UFC event that took place in September last year. This time around, Volkanovski was defending his featherweight belt, so it's undeniable that the pressure must have been real. It had only been two years since Volkanovski acquired that band of shiny gold and silver, and he'd already been challenged twice out of it. So as the days drew nearer, Volkanovski started airing all the pressure in different interviews, and of course, social media sites. In the most shocking remarks, Volkanovski called Ortega fake and awkward, and that he was done with him. Ortega and his fans naturally heard the notorious podcast, and Ortega personally took the time out to type his response on Twitter. Ortega said that Volkanovski's tendency to respect him in person, and then to do the opposite of that in his absence, shows the kind of person he is. He also pointed out that when Joe Rogan tried to ask why Volkanovski thought of Ortega as fake, the Australian didn't really have an answer. Volkanovski later admitted that he was only looking for a reason to hate Ortega, and may not actually believe that he was fake. Plus, there was some talk about Volkanovski only trying to trigger his opponent before the match. He played a couple of pranks on Ortega to try to get the best of him. Just that shows how audacious Volkanovski is, and how he can go to any length to make his opponents feel bad. Though Ortega did respond, Volkanovski's podcast was already out for the world to listen, and possibly agree to the remarks he made against him. Ortega must have felt pretty humiliated to be called out for something unprovoked, and then being bullied for it even further. Apart from those instances, Volkanovski has engaged in bullying other fighters as well. This is a man who wins, and he knows that he'll win, so there's no stopping what he does or says. That was it for today's video. What are your thoughts on the upcoming Volkanovski versus the Korean Zombie? Who do you think will win? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, where we post similar videos quite frequently. We'll see you in the next one.